everyone. Welcome to the Compericus webinar for the process cockpit, where uh, we uh, will be showing a way to potentially save up to 35% time on ear and closing, not only ear and closing, but of course the ear periodic closing. Um, my name is Howard Chen. I'm a managing director of Compericus Inc. And uh, in, uh, located in Boston. Uh, your other presenter today will be Paul Thiemann. He is a development architect uh, located in uh, our Dusseldorf, uh, Germany office. And uh, we will uh, be uh, doing our presentation. The agenda for today is uh, I will spend uh, about 10 minutes of a introduction to Compericus. And then I will hand it over to Paul for the uh, solution overview of the process cockpit as well as the demo uh, of the system. Uh, I know that you are very interested in the process cockpit, so I will try to be short as possible in terms of our Compericus introduction. So Compericus uh, is a company that was founded in 2009 as a team of experienced consultants and software developers. As I've already said, we have two offices in the, uh, one in Dusseldorf, and uh, Germany, and the second in Boston. Uh, in 2021, we were uh, included in part of the X1F group uh, with the over 900 employees that specializes only in the SAP um, area. And we are a preferred partner for SAP TRM, FAM, services and content provider for uh, the insurance companies, but also a preferred partner with SAP. So we continue to do our work and I will go into a little bit more of uh, what we have as we as a part of our introduction. And for uh, our portfolio, we uh, are focused only on the treasury and the asset management. So compared because that's all we do within the SAP, not uh, like the other uh, consulting firms that does uh, everything else. We have solutions that are uh, scalable. Again, we have provided solutions for large um, uh, global companies, but we also have solutions for medium and small size companies, which we will look into. Uh, we have um, have over 20 years of experience in most of our uh, consultants. And we can try to provide a, uh, a solution that with quality on uh, uh, the four products that are in the capital asset controlling uh, areas. Just a, a quick uh, uh, introduction of the X1F group. Uh, so uh, what you will see is that uh, we as I said, we focus only on SAP. Uh, four companies focus on the uh, functional processes and five companies uh, are technical in nature. We have Edveco who focuses on SAP transformation and data management for finance and risk regulation. Uh, Compericus, of course, as I've said, uh, we focus on the uh, finance treasury and asset management, mainly the TRM and the CML. ICOR is a sister company that focuses on the insurance banking and financial services with business consulting and automation. And our sister company, Xpact, uh, focuses on the SAP banking uh, industry. On the technical side, uh, in order to provide uh, holistic um, offerings, we have a basis team that does SAP technical consulting and migration and of course, uh, with uh, many of the companies now going to the s hana the conversion. E2 Securities is a uh, yeah, cybersecurity. And as we know, cybersecurity is something that's been uh, very uh, important uh, to many uh, clients. But one of the things to note is that uh, given SAP um, themselves, uh, uses E2 as a uh, as a partner to, to do their cybersecurity. Uh, so uh, it's that, that the E2 is a company that is doing 
uh, some really good work. FSP uh, is a full service identity and access management, of course, again, on the IT security and compliance side. Information Fabric is a data analytic and artificial intelligence um, the focus company. Uh, and as we know, uh, with the chat GPT and all the artificial intelligence that have come up uh, in the uh, media recently, this is a, a hot topic uh, that, that everybody seems to be uh, looking at. And our uh, last sister company that I want to introduce is Matrix Technology, which does managed services and IT infrastructure, especially on the cloud operation. Uh, as we know, uh, the uh, uh, with S4 being in the cloud uh, becoming uh, very important. Okay. So uh, that was just the uh, our accessor companies, but let's now uh, focus on the SAP Treasury and Financial Asset Management. Uh, SAP celebrates 30 years of uh, the, the TRM. Of course, SAP is much longer, but the TRM has been in existence for about 30 years. When, uh, what's important about this is the fact that, and uh, here is a, a comment from uh, Anton Tomic, Global Head of Insurance, that Compercus was uh, involved from the original line of code, as you see here, first line of code. So we had uh, the team members from Compercus that were on the original team that developed the TRM CMO solution. And of course, what we've uh, been doing with SAP is continuing to partner uh, on the, the solutions. And uh, we uh, not only uh, provide the consulting and implementation services, but as uh, necessary, what we uh, have done is develop additional solutions around the, the standard SAP TRM, uh, because uh, there are solutions that uh, require uh, that are required that SAP has decided not to develop on their own. So we have solutions and uh, we have a very good working relationship with SAP uh, in that, of course, we do uh, testing of uh, any new releases with them, as well as uh, uh, any uh, assistance that we can provide with uh, any kind of consulting uh, engagements. So just a uh, quick uh, introduction to uh, the Compercus development team. We have over 20 developers. So uh, we've got the developers are focused on uh, uh, supporting our existing software, but additionally uh, to uh, uh, doing uh, new development uh, work uh, as the, uh, the market that, that changes. We have over 55 existing customers. And uh, in terms of our products, over 25, and we have projects um, in uh, 25 uh, countries with uh, multiple clients. So but what does this mean in terms of uh, additional products, such as at the, which we will be uh, talking about, which is our um, process cockpit, but before we get to there, some additional uh, items. Bloomberg and Compericus are integration partner. What that means is that since 2019 and prior to 2019, we've had a SAP connector as a, a tool uh, and a software that we uh, offer that allows uh, Bloomberg and any other uh, outside market data provider and uh, trading systems or any other systems to be integrated within to the TRM. Basically, any project uh, typically has uh, interior faces that needs to be developed. What we've done is created a couple of product that is, does not require development. However, just com through a configuration, as if you were going into the SAP IMG, to be able to uh, manage uh, the um, your interfaces. And uh, since 2019, we have been an official development partner of Bloomberg, which means the any data that is um, provided by Bloomberg, it's uh, already been uh, uh, validated and uh, it's you know, working uh, seamlessly with the Bloomberg. So additional uh, selection of software uh, 
and services and that we see in our current challenges. And this does not uh, show uh, all the portfolio that we have, but just a few. As for uh, HANA migration, so uh, as many clients are going into uh, the S4 environment, what we've developed is a treasury data hub uh, for SAP, meaning we do not, as I've said already, uh, Compercus does not do all SAP consulting, only treasury. So if you have uh, uh, S4 data um, HANA migration and you have uh, treasury data, this is a service that uh, the product as well as the service we provide so that uh, the treasury migration will be uh, uh, seamless and easier. Now, uh, typically we will uh, be part of a uh, HANA migration team to, uh, to do this, but just the complexity uh, of the treasury data is where we had that clients ask for that this type of a uh, service as well as software. Another one is the reference interest rate reform. So as we know, uh, LIBOR is going away and SAP has uh, developed a solution, but that solution only works for uh, SAP ECC 60 uh, enhancement pack eight or S4 HANA. So any clients that are on uh, enhancement pack seven of ECC 60 or potentially even prior, uh, uh, we had uh, clients ask for solutions that uh, will cater to them. So we have created the, our uh, development team has created a solution. So we have solutions uh, to be able to meet that as well as of course, not only the software, but the service uh, uh, that, that's required to uh, be able to uh, integrate the uh, new reference center rate that reforms into your system. Uh, environmental social governance is a, uh, a topic that has uh, have been uh, coming up uh, quite uh, uh, a lot in uh, recently. And we have created a solution that allows for the evaluation of the investments against the ESG and not only the software, but of course the consulting that's uh, associated with it. And on the solvency reliability, we have a, a software for uh, the intelligent liquidity analytics and all this is based on SAP and uh, the, not only the software, but the service that uh, goes with it. We also have uh, the tools for automated uh, testing. And uh, of course, on uh, most of it, uh, we do focus on the TRM, but uh, it can be expanded uh, to uh, potentially some of the other uh, systems. There are many automated uh, test tools uh, out in the market, but of course, uh, this is focused mainly on the treasury. And uh, the, uh, yeah, the, the one more, uh, and of course, as I said, not the full portfolio, but uh, when it comes to migration or transferring the collaterals uh, to the collateral management system, we do have a software that allows to come from go that will take you the data from the CML to the collateral management system uh, for a seamless data uh, migration. So uh, that is a uh, hopefully a, a quick uh, introduction to Compericus. And uh, what I will now do is uh, turn it over to Paul to go through the solution overview of the process cockpit and the demo, which uh, we, is what everybody is really looking forward to. A warm welcome also from my side to the uh, com to our computer course process cockpit webinar. My name is Paul Thiemann and um, I'm the development architect of a process cockpit. Today, I will present you two points. I will get you a solution overview with, uh, with a motivation and some architecture slides. And uh, then I will do a live demo at uh, the end. So let's go directly into the motivation. Compericus is 
uh, basically a farm TRM consultant company. So I've prepared a simple treasury process for you. Um, I have grouped this process into some groups. I have here the market data group, we have a master data group, the uh, trades group, and then at the end there's the reporting group. And each of this group has different uh, tasks, different steps which need to be taken. Like for master data group, there need to be partner data imported, there need to be security master data imported. In the trades group, we need to create uh, additional trades. Uh, we may see that master data is missing, which is might be created beforehand. Um, we have also here for the value transaction we run, like we have the TBB1, the TPM44. And um, as you see, this process gets really big. And it's not uh, completely uh, created here because you see, for instance, the market data uh, import are not uh, done. Uh, here would be something like FX rates calculation, um, cross currency calculations, then uh, security uh, prices import, yield curves import. And maybe you have some special prices or FX rates you get from special sources. You would have here also additional points. And uh, also the data check group here, um, this will not be a single group, but these data checks will be placed all over your process. There will be uh, small checks uh, here or here or wherever you can uh, imagine. And so that this process gets really big and really hard to manage. And what increases the situation even more is that uh, there's no person that knows the process from the start to its end. So uh, many departments are uh, utilizing this process. There's a market data group, there's a master data group. Um, they are grouped into the operations process. Then you have a reporting group. Um, there's some special group for the legal reporting, who is doing this. And uh, so your knowledge about this process is distributed among many people, among many departments. And if you would like to go and see your process, uh, you don't can't, you, you can't get an uh, idea of it, uh, what's the current status. And this is the first point uh, we want to address on the motivation. It's we want to create the transparency of a process. We want to show you which steps are in the process. We want to show you which um, where stand, where's the current uh, status of these steps, and um, are you maybe in time or not in time, uh, etc. This is the point you want to create. Um, we will also want to cre increase the automation because what the people normally do in this process is we go in, they start an SAP transaction, they select a variant, they execute the program, they get a coffee, they come back, they uh, evaluate the result of a process uh, of a um, of your transaction, and then go on to the next transaction. Open the transaction, select the variant, uh, start it, and uh, okay, they coffee they have already. So this is the. Uh, point of automation, this needs not to be done by someone manually. This, our process can cockpit, can automate, and uh, you only need to take actions if there is an error or if there is something that is not uh, easy to automate. But most SAP transactions are very easy to automate, so um, we, are, we want to increase this automation. We want to increase the quality of a process. Um, as I told you before in the uh, in the process, there is there, there will be data checks. There will be checks for the quality. There will be cross checks uh, of some um, FI uh, accounts, etc. And with a process cockpit, we want to enable the customer to add specific checks to uh, the certain points in the process to increase the quality. And here comes also the automation in handy that. We want to have these checks be automated, so they cost you no time. We run every time your process run, and will increase automatically the uh, quality of your process. We want to make the process manageable again. So this is a meant in a timely manner. So you have a process which needs to be on time. The legal, the legal data must be uh, at 
three working days after my end must be out. And um, in this case, you want to know, uh, is there a delay currently? Do I have to take actions to speed up the rest of a process? Uh, where do I understand in the process? And this is something we want also to achieve that you can easily manage your process and take actions if they are needed. We want to create a new way of work. As I mentioned, um, the automation that you go to the SAP transaction every time. And we want that you go to the process cockpit, that there's your process. You see that the most transactions are already executed. You maybe want to see the details. You go in, you get also your uh, data. Uh, you would see it normally if you would execute the transaction. And this is the new way of work. We want not you to start the transactions. We want that you go to a process cockpit and get there the information you need. We want also to create uh, increase user acceptance because um, you all know SAP transactions don't look very nice. And with uh, sub UI5, um, we want to be able to show a nice interface that's not overcrowded with a lot of information. We want to have small information pieces and then enable you to drill down to what you uh, certainly need. So this is automate. Uh, this is um, our motivation. And now we check which processes we can uh, uh, utilize this for. We have a time critical processes. Like I said, the uh, three days after month end closing, the data need to be uh, at the uh, authorities. And um, here, our tool can provide you information. Uh, is everything okay? Will it be ready at this time or not? We have the quality critical processes. Here, we want to uh, achieve that the data you send to your uh, authorities, they are on spot correct and uh, validated. And this is something with the small checks we can include with the, auto, with the process seen in SAP, where you don't have an Excel list that's uh, moved around to different departments. We want to avoid this. We want to have all information inside the process cockpit so that you can see if there was something when there were an error and that you can address them uh, easily and uh, solve them. We want to automate the processes. This is, uh, I said, SAP transactions are easy to automate and um, we want your process to, to run automatically so that you can focus on the very important things um, and maybe some errors <clears throat> which you might occur. The daily processes. I think everyone knows who's working with SAP. He gets to the desk at the morning and then starts one, two, three, four SAP transactions. And now imagine these transactions were already been executed. You would have a green light in your process cockpit and say, okay, we well are done. And then you uh, are fine to go and uh, get the next. Or they are red and you see, okay, here's an error here if you need to check. And uh, now you would start your daily business uh, with this one. And of course, we can automate any other business processes which uh, may occur uh, in SAP. Um, our framework is open, so uh, it's not only TRM based, but uh, if you have something in material management it's, or FI, we are totally fine, we can do it. <clears throat> okay, now on this slide, we want to talk about a little bit about, our, little bit about the architecture. So um, we are based on an S4 HANA system. However, with some constraints, we are able also to work on an EHP8 system. The main functions will work, um, but uh, some overview, uh, some screens uh, will not work. So um, the heart of our process cockpit is our process engine. And this enables us to start uh, every um, transaction inside the SAP system. Uh, we can start our own transaction like the FA message monitor is one of our products. We can start, we can start TPM 13, TPM 1, um, so SAP transactions. And of course, if you have own transactions, own programs uh, created, which need to be evaluated, we can do this also. Um, the only uh, thing is all these programs need to be batch ready. So because we are executing them in the background and yeah, they need to uh, work with it. 
Um, we are also able to handle other data coming from other systems like one front office systems like middlewares or BW systems we haven't integrated uh, lately so that these systems send our process cockpit data information about the status and we collaborate with them and show them in the uh, in the web UI which is based on a web browser it's a sub UI 5 UI you will see later on in the demo and uh, the users will work basically with this one. Okay. On the next slide, I will present you some screens for process cockpit. At first, we have three main screens. Um, the first one is the overview screen. It's a landing page. Here you see all currently running business processes. With uh, what's their status, are there in delay? Um, these are the uh, main questions you want to answer here. If you now want to see more details of a business process, uh, you go to the process view. Here, business process is split into several uh, entities. Um, these entities are for us some um, technical thing, but of course, uh, behind it, there are some bash um, for example, the SAP company codes, there could be the U uh, US statutory reporting, NASC company codes, but any other differentiation criteria you might have in your programs and you want to use, we can also elaborate this into our process uh, view and uh, structure your process. The next view is the group view. Uh, as you remember, the first process I showed you, um, we have structured the process in several groups like the market data group, the master data group, and at the end, the reporting group. And the group view is being on for one entity, for one, con one company code. You, it will show you all steps, uh, their status, and you have also the details of a step, um, et cetera. Uh, you might have also some uh, key steps milestones in your process and herefore we have a multi-group view here you can select your milestones you can see uh, you can uh, see them uh, over all entities and you see their status and um, this is uh, actually for this one um, uh, okay the next screens are the task view this goes uh, also in this new way of work where um, I have, for instance, um, a task, a step, which has an error, and um, I know this error can be better solved by my colleague. So I assign this step to my colleague, and he can take all the information, but he uh, is to uh, change it. So yeah, this is the task view. We have a reporting view. So at the end of your process, you want to know um, how much was automated, how many steps failed. Uh, how many steps were delayed, etc. cetera. Um, you, might, my, you may want to get an, a list of how a process worked out at the end uh, for auditing purposes, etc. This is all included in the reporting view. We have a management view. This view is basically designed for the uh, timely manners. So uh, there's a process uh, in terms of time. Uh, is there a delay? Do I need to take actions? Uh, where do we stand uh, for with the plant data compared to the uh, current data? We are doing uh, forecasts with estimates about uh, using the previous executions of a process. So all this is uh, within the management view. We have a graph view. Here you can see your process um, and how it is uh, currently going. Uh, here you can see your process and um, see all the steps, all the dependencies between the steps. Um, it's basically a network graph to visualize your process and how it is designed. Um, we have a newsfeed. Uh, this feed, uh, this newsfeed is for uh, communications within a process. Here, all comments you might do to a step to the process itself, we are uh, listed and you see maybe um, if there are errors, etc. and here you can communicate with your uh, colleagues. Okay, on the next slide, there are some screens and I don't want to bother with the screens. I want to go directly to the live demo. <clears throat> okay, let me just switch my screen. And here we start with 
the uh, process cockpit um, with the overview screen. We directly see that our uh, US data to reporting process has an error because it's red. And of course, we see also that uh, the fun month and closing process, which should be uh, finished at the end of February, is, is still running. And we have one process uh, which is delayed and the other two are finished. And now I can go in and uh, show the details. Um, I will do this then with the month and closing process, which I have created for today. And yeah, here uh, we have also some other processes prepared, like a general ledger month and closing process, like an FPSL month end process, and also here some uh, for our statutory reporting products for Germany and Italy. We have also uh, out of the box some um, processes ready. So before I go into the fun month and closing process, I want to show you the graph view. This is uh, this icon here. I select the operations process. I select the current key date. And here I see that the process is created uh, by three groups. And if I want to see the details, the steps of this group, I click into it. Then, um, yeah, I see here that there are the steps uh, like the start process, the demo interface, the job control. I see the dependencies between the steps and I see also if a step has uh, no predecessor, I see have here these three steps, which then will be uh, executed at once. And uh, for instance, the partner Delta file has four preconditions that need to be checked, uh, need to be finished and so on. And also I can create a switch uh, on the other groups, but uh, they are straightforward. They are one step out, uh, after each other. And with this few, we want you to get an overview about your business processes um, at our customers. This view is really helpful because the business process is really much more complex um, as uh, this uh, demo scenario I, we have created here. <laughs> okay, so let's go to overview screen. Let's go to the month and closing process and to the process view. Okay, now we are in the process view. We have created it for uh, three company codes, the PC01 and the PC03. Uh, you see here the three groups and you see here also uh, how many steps are already uh, finished in the group. You would see if there's an error, uh, you have your status. And now I want to go and say, uh, I want to start a process. So I set the first step as a start process as a success. <clears throat> and at first, we have a, a demo interface, a CD demo interface uh, running. Um, this step will create some basic example traits uh, for us, which we uh, can see later on. You see uh, there was an automatic refresh of a, a few uh, when the next step is started. Um, the next step will be our FA job control program, which is executed and basically um, starting uh, the um, FA. So let's go into one group. Um, okay, some slow waiting time here. Yep. Now we have here the uh, group view. We see here all steps within the group, like the start the process, the demo interface. We see here the uh, checks of the FX strategy group as yield rates, and also here the partner and investment delta file upload. Okay. Um, if we have control um, the main important uh, values like it's an automated step it's independent of the entity so it will run for all entity once uh, we have here the status we have the remaining time um, this is if you plan how when it should be done um, this will be the time um, you have left or if you are in delay it will say how much you are on delay we have here the transaction so that you can directly jump into the transaction go into the sap and uh, see what's there <clears throat> um yeah we have the dependencies like the demo interface okay now it's finished uh, the process is directly up updated and uh, we see that the group is fully finished mm, we have here also in history section here you can see, okay, the uh, the job uh, was started at 16.36 uh, and it ended uh, two minutes after. 
we have here a file list if you want to upload uh, data. <clears throat> and yeah, here are then uh, at the bottom the details of a, a step. And um, in the help section, you would be able to leave your um, colleagues some hints on how to perform this action. Maybe do some, if there's an error, uh, put in some uh, hints on how to solve them, etc. So this is basically a group view. And uh, let me go back to the process view. Here we see now that also the next group is nearly finished. Uh, we are at the point of a manual transaction entry. So let me uh, show you something else. Uh, you might have seen that here on top, I now have a free. This means I have uh, three tasks assigned to me. So let's get into it. And here we have uh, the list of a task. This is the task queue. These tasks are assigned to me. And um, here you see that's the manual transaction entry. And I have to do it for these three entities. OK, so let's do them. Um, uh, I could assign also these steps to an other user, like change user, and say I want like to sub user. And I say, Howard, please take over. And now um, how it uh, can do these changes. OK, um, this is the task view. Let's go uh, to the management view. Here, uh, it's the timely manner um, of a business process. We see that we have here our current uh, running process. It's the from an, from month and closing process. Um, we can also drill down and see we have grouped the entities into um, uh, into with text, and also we can see the uh, steps and how uh, the, the groups and how they did perform. So you see the closing preparation group, which is finished. Um, you see here this is 100%. Uh, you see it is green. And this is the uh, green bar. And if this green bar would exceed here the black line, the, the black line will be the uh, plant data. So the plant start and the plant uh, end. And if it, this goes longer, this would be red and you would have an issue and would need to take actions. <clears throat> yeah, this is our um, management view. So let's get back to the process. And of course, I have here manual transaction entry. And yeah, I have some example traits I want to add. So I upload a file. Um, Everyone can see that I have uploaded the file. These are the example traits. Uh, I now go maybe into the SAP transaction to create them. I feel a shortcut again to do so. And um, when I finished, I say, OK, I have success. And I imported, imported the or oh, free, free traits. OK, submit. And now the next steps will be executed. Uh, you here see here also the comment I have uh, just wrote. Um, I would like to show you this uh, the next steps in the multi group view. So I select uh, the last two groups and I select all steps, but not these three because you see here these three are completely finished. Um, we don't I don't care about them. And then I have here magically a list with uh, uh, steps with and their current status. Uh, let me just finish these two steps. There are also a manual transaction entry, change status, success, and here we go. And now these steps are also executed, and the next steps are also immediately um, done. Uh, okay. I have an issue. You see here, this step goes automatically to uh, failed. So in the um, overview screen, this process is now red and you need to take actions. Uh, here on the process view, we have also the status failed. 
And if we drill down into the step, uh, we are directly here in the FOOP step, and we can now check what happened. Mm, in this story, we see that there was a job started. And now I want to see what uh, the job was, uh, be, how the job was executed. I go into the FOOP here, and I see this is the variant, this is the data on how the job was executed. And if I want to see the results of a, a job, I go here to show details. Uh, we have here created some error messages, of course. Uh, these error messages are ex um, extracted from the spool list, uh, which were created in the background. And this will help you um, if your spool list is not as short as ours because we know at our customers, these spool lists will be uh, 40, 50 pages. And then to find an error, it will be uh, way too long to scroll down. So we have extracted these errors already <clears throat> and uh, presenting you them on the first screen. Um, we see here it's some positional error. And if I may go back, I can also uh, see the job log. Okay, this is here not very uh, useful. But in case, sometimes they are useful, uh, more useful. Okay. The next thing is that I need to fix the error and uh, then move on uh, with the process. Uh, I would like now to leave the error uh, and uh, say success. And everyone will know that I did this. I done the error. And so the next steps can be executed. Uh, in real life, you would need to fix it first. But for a demo purpose, uh, purpose uh, where I want to show a process cockpit, uh, I don't want to deal with it. So now the process is uh, moving on again. And yeah, let me go to uh, here. It is now uh, blue. It's, it's still running. Um, you see here that the other uh, processes are uh, no, no more advanced. The uh, transactions are executed one after each other. Uh, currently, the TPM 18 is here running. For instance, um, in the other, uh, here we have the TBB1. Uh, let me um, increase the speed a little bit because I want also to show you um, a good case where you have here also the spool list for the TBB1. <clears throat> And here you can see, for instance, that our uh, demo trades, which our demo interface has created, were successfully posted. So you see here that uh, our process cockpit is actually working. Now, uh, yeah, the TPM44, this was a quick one. The TPM10 now here is working. We go back to this screen and uh, I will use the multi group view again. Uh, select only the last group, select all steps now. And yeah, let me just do some more checks so that the process um, will at the end be uh, on the same page and totally finished. Yeah. Now we see a process here is finished. Um, I go back to the process view. Uh, now I have your filter for the lock processes. These, um, when all processes of a business process are finished, we lock them. That means that uh, you need very special uh, privileges to change the process. This is in order to make uh, it uh, for uh, audit purposes so that no one can um, change it and uh, the data is persistent in your uh, system. The last screen I want to show you is the reporting. Let's go in here. We have created here some KPIs like the automation or the delay. Of course, uh, we have an open interface here so that you will be able to add your own KPIs if you want to. We have here also uh, some list output uh, if you want to see the process and how it was executed. Uh, you see here the end date, for instance, the step name is here. And yeah, who did it? And of course, I'm able to also download this uh, as a PDF. And here we go. Here's the PDF download. 
uh, from a step which you can put on a file server and have it available for auditing purposes. With this one, I would say uh, thank you to all. And I think we have some questions. So please, Howard, take over. So with that, uh, I would like to uh, open the floor for questions. Of course, what you can do is uh, like okay, raise your hand and we can unmute you to speak, or uh, you can put the questions in the Q and A. And I do have a few questions already like there, but I'd like to open up the floor for the uh, participants or the attendees uh, to be able to ask your questions first. If not, um, I will uh, go through the other questions that, that have already been posted onto our Q and A board. But uh, please go ahead and raise your hand and uh, we can unmute you. So while we're waiting, so the first question that we have is, does the process cockpit also work with several modules? Uh, as an example, CML and other systems such as ERP in one machine and VW in another. and uh, the uh, uh, for this one, uh, yes, the other processes will work with the uh, SAP. Uh, sorry, with the process cockpit, and uh, as um, uh, Paul had mentioned, we have implemented the VW so that even the VW process can also be included. So uh, although the process cockpit was originally designed with TRM and uh, the uh, treasury modules uh, in uh, focus. The fact that it is uh, uh, running through batch, uh, other processes can also be included. Uh, when there is an error in a step, does this need to be corrected before the next step is started? Paul, uh, would you be able to take the uh, yes. uh, answer there? And the answer is yes. So um, if a step uh, is uh, going to a status error, the uh, of it will not be started until the uh, error is fixed. So uh, it will be a hard block. Um, our status concept is also, um, if you would like to uh, say that's also only an, um, <clears throat> it's only uh, um, warning, uh, we can also do it, and you can inform that's a warning, uh, but the next steps can start. But uh, if you put it direct uh, to an error, uh, the next steps uh, will be stopped from starting until the error is solved. Uh, hopefully, uh, that uh, answers your uh, question. Uh, if not, uh, please go ahead and either raise your hand or um, uh, ask uh, further uh, follow on uh, questions, please. The next question we have on the board is how many process steps have been automated for customers and how much faster have the process become? Uh, Paul, do you want to take that question or uh, we do have other uh, folks uh, on the panel that could potentially uh, answer the question as well? um for one customer we are we have implemented the process cockpit um we have different types of processes some uh, they would like to have auto, um, manual but uh for an uh month and year end clothing we i think we are at least um with two-thirds of automated uh, steps which are running and I know uh, that they are planning to uh, implement some new checks uh, which will also be um automated so the automation will even increase in future and i think um, when you speak from a project uh, perspective we mostly start with a um, uh, manual process and then uh, go step by step and uh, start the automation of uh, the single processes uh, the single steps and so at the uh, hopefully at the end uh, by 80 percent of automation for a tim uh, month end process Thank you, Paul. 
Um, the next question we have is, does the process topic also work for large numbers of uh, company codes? And that, that, that is yes. As uh, Paul already showed you, uh, it, it was set up uh, for the demo with three company codes. However, we know that uh, many uh, of our clients have a uh, much larger number, uh, potentially even in the tens and some into the hundreds. Uh, so uh, we can use the process cockpit for multiple uh, company codes. Uh, the next question I have is, what is the experience with the task assignment? Uh, Paul, what do you know, uh, or any of the other uh, panelists that, that we have, uh, would you be able to answer that? The task assignment um, changed the work that teams or the, the, the actually uh, teams of, on the process has uh, worked with it. So if there's a task, if there's something to do, um, they know that uh, maybe some other colleague has the, um, is able to uh, do it better. Uh, so they assign it, um, they put in comments to the task uh, so that they work in a team as whole on the process. Yep, I think this is really um, a nice feature uh, we have seen also uh, in reality working very well. Thank you, Paul. The next question we have uh, is, uh, how are the license fees and the annual maintenance fees determined? I uh, believe this would be the best answer. Um, well, okay, so let me say, okay, is there anybody on the panelists who can okay, answer the okay, question? Or uh, we can provide a um, you know, response after the uh, our uh, presentation separately. Are there any other questions from the uh, participants and attendees? In that case, uh, since the that, that uh, so what we'd like to do is uh, th thank you very much for your participation. And um, hope you have a uh, wonderful rest of your day.